Uh, there's also a report this week that friends of Megan have encouraged her to drop the idea of launching an alcohol brand. We did discuss um, the idea of wine under American Riviera Orchard a few weeks ago on the show, but what's this all about? Gosh, American Riviera Orchard, it really is a mouthful, isn't it? And as Angela said, this is kind of the issue. So there is the, the time it's taken for this to roll out and also the fact that it's just such a broad scope of products already and, and she really needs to have a clear focus as she launches this, which we haven't seen yet. But in terms of the wine, okay, so Megan clearly has an interest in this area. Her former lifestyle blog was actually named after her favourite wine. So certainly it's something she's passionate about. Uh, but the wine business is a whole other thing. It, you know, it's so ferociously competitive. It takes years to develop something that is going to be a really marketable product. And I think there's concern that if she doesn't sort of fire the gun on this on this business really soon and with some really solid products, you know, interest will wane. The soft launch was so long ago. I really thought that we'd have seen more from the American Riviera Orchard by now. <laughs> Always a mouthful. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's the main issue with the wine. It just seems to be an, an added element to something that's already taken quite a long time. And it's also wine is such a difficult area to get right. And I just don't think she has the time to really um, finesse that. Fair enough. And Bronte, staying with you, and we understand the King has finally kicked off his summer holiday. Look, it's been a rough year for the Monarchs so far. Um, what's he up to? Do we know? Yeah, so, of course, the Royals will head up to Scotland to Balmoral uh, for this summer holiday. The King and the Queen have gone up there already. They'll be joined by members of the family, including Kate and William and their kids and, and other members like the King's siblings. But, look, this is their favourite place. This is all the Royals' favourite place. The late Queen absolutely loved it there. I was actually at Balmoral Castle just early last week, and I can say... I really get the appeal. It is the most beautiful area in the Scottish Highlands. Um, and so it's a really an opportunity for them to just go up there, relax, take a break, away from the public eye. It's quite remote. Uh, they go hunting. They have barbecues. They just sort of hang out as a family, which is a very relatable thing, albeit in a castle. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's just kicked off, and that will see them all out of the public eye for a few weeks. And never more than now have they needed that. It has been an unbelievably rocky few, um, few months. So, and with Kate and uh, the King both dealing with their cancer diagnosis, that time out, and, and particularly, again, just away from the public eye and with a complete break, will be very, very useful. And Angela, they are away on holidays, but there's been some criticism about the royal family's lack of enthusiasm for British Olympic success. Is there anything to this or is it just a grumble? It's just a grumble. So this 800 metre runner called Heat Keely Hodgkinson won a gold medal. The Brits haven't won a gold medal in uh, um, Olympics, oh, sorry, in athletics since 2016. But you know what? The Queen Camilla, she went, you know, paid tribute to the equestrians. Princess Anne has paid tri tribute, uh, William and Kate, to um, another sport. They don't have to tick and, you know, make mention of every last Olympian. They've become like a hallmark card service and it would dilute the actual uh, messages that they do send out. So it's a bit, uh, I think it's a bit mean-spirited to suggest. Also, as Bronte just said, they're on holiday and they're allowed one. Correct. And Bronte, the Prince and Princess of Wales are also uh, on holidays at the moment. But, you know, everyone's wondering what happens next. What do we know uh, that for Princess Catherine following the summer holiday? That's the big question. That is the big question because the start of the year, we went months without seeing her, understandably, as she dealt with her cancer diagnosis and treatment. We then, right before the summer break, started to get peaks of her again, you know, at Wimbledon and at the Trooping the Colour. And it does look like she's on a course where she is able to step out and partake in things now as she feels well, although she did stress that it will be on a case-by-case -case basis. So, look, after another break and having that holiday with her family, I think we'll see more of that. I think she will be taking part in public events where possible and in a safe environment and places that are comfortable for her and, and that the doctors have obviously approved. Um, we will be getting the traditional back-to-school photo of the royal kids, which is always a bit of a thrill. It's such a cute pic. Um, of course, in the UK, the kids go start their school year in September. Uh, and Prince George would traditionally, as an 11-year-old, be going to secondary school, but because he goes to an independent prep school, he'll be there for another two years, just FYI. But we can keep an eye out for that family photo, and I think that'll be a really nice occasion. That school photo will be a lovely way to kick off the autumn. And Angela, lastly, we understand the Queen is being honoured with a new garden in London. Can you tell us about it? 
That's right, Caroline. It's at Regent's Park. It's in honour of her. It will be opened on what would have been, well, um, will be her, would have been her 100th birthday. It, I love this park. This is my favourite park in London. And as we all know, you know, Kensington Gardens, there is a tribute park there to Diana. This one will be really beautiful. It'll have Lily of the Valley. It'll have royal tulips. It's got a viewing platform. But the Queen loved gardening and she used to walk around this area of her garden with her corgis. And what I love, one of my favourite stories about the Queen and her gardens was that she had this summer house and in the summer house was a phone in case she, somebody needed to get hold of her. Not for her, a mobile phone. She had her own summer house with a landline in it if she needed to be uh, spoken to when she was uh, in her garden. So this will be a beautiful tribute to her and uh, I'm sure that there'll be, you know, it, for a lot of people it will be the perfect place to go and remember her extraordinary reign. And no doubt a must-visit place when in London. Angela Moller, Bronte Coy, thank you so much for joining us.